Another sales lesson from the living room. Let's get after it. Let's talk about this empty word that I hear too much in sales, relationships. Everyone says, oh, you gotta have a good relationship with your customer. Oh, I have a great relationship. I don't understand why they didn't buy. It's all bullshit, because we haven't accurately defined relationships. So we're gonna do that right now. So there's five pillars, count. One, two, three, four, five, to a good relationship. Let me tell you where most of us are going wrong, and me included for the longest time. We judged most of our relationships on likability alone. You're in sales. My guess is you're pretty likable, or else you wouldn't have gotten in this business. If you're not likable, it might be time to you know go find another gig. But most of us have this checked, right? Oh, I like this person. But the only one fifth of the equation. Here's what the other people are asking themselves about you and have more impact on whether they're gonna do business with you. Trust, respect, rapport, and credibility. Now here's the kicker. What ends up happening is, first of all, this is the first thing that the brain is asking themselves about you when I first meet you. Can I trust this person? The second one they ask is, can I respect this person? So the brain immediately when I meet you is going, can I trust you and can I respect you? Now here's the challenge, especially for those of you that have been in the game or in your industry for a while. What happens is you go in early trying to get respect based on your industry knowledge, how much you know about a problem they have. And what ends up happening is you go and see a customer that you've seen this kind of individual a million times, Let's just say you're a funnel builder and you're trying to build them a funnel. And you go, oh yeah, I know exactly what your problem is. You're not doing split testing. You're not reading the analytics behind. You're not putting enough money. You're not further identifying who your customer looks like. You're not leading with pain points. And you tell, 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 trying to get respect on how much you know about solving their problem. All the while, the brain in that person is asking first, can I trust you? And that happens by a series of questions and things we have to build into, actually, which is the third piece, building in the report, right? So first of all, I'm coming, and here's the challenge. I'm coming across a lot of people that are giving me this information, right? I could talk to five funnel builders that say the same shit, that can identify my problem, and I'll believe them or respect their ability to do something. It's can I trust that you're not gonna hose me over like I've been hosed over before I'm talking to you funnel builders. <clears throat> Anyways, I digress. So how can you begin to gain my trust? And are you starting to put together a strategy early in your conversation that gains that trust, right? Com things that you wanna say immediately that, uh, that tell me that you're not some same cheesy ass salesperson I've seen every time. Those are, we call those resonating statements or things you ask of empathy statements. How have you positioned yourself well in front of me that gets me to perk up my ears and say, ah, you're different and that you can accurately help me with my situation? Here, I'll tell you the main key is empathy. We'll call that EQ and the ability to put yourself in my shoes. You're the salesperson, I'm the customer. How good are you at putting yourself in my shoes early? Not solving my problems, not telling me how I can fix things, but just understanding my situation. That's the first thing to trust. There's a lot of other things that go into it. We don't have time to get to it. Then I'm looking for respect, right? Can I get some respect out of you in terms of what have you done? Have you done it in the past? Have you done it for people like me? Give me some proof sources. So that comes into play. Credibility is a big piece, right? And you do this by asking great questions. And a lot of these we'll call them pain questions. We'll do another segment on pain questions. A lot of people think credibility is built by your resume or who your other clients. No, it's, it's done by the questions you ask. Think about it, right? You go to a doctor, you get a little tummy ache, right? The doctor's probably done blood work on you, knows exactly what's wrong with you. And if they just throw you a bottle of pills, you're going, what the hell, man? You're not gonna ask me any questions. They wanna know what you ate. Is it coming out of here or here, right? They're gonna ask you all these questions. And those questions build the trust, right? You don't ask the doctor where they went to medical school when they give you the prescription. No, they ask the right questions to identify certain problems. So this is built through great pain questions. Here's the key. When it comes to rapport, we haven't done enough scientific data on that. Most of us are basing rapport 
on our natural personality. And we're never adapting to the personality of the client, right? Is this client outgoing, reserved? Are they results oriented? Are they people oriented? Are they task oriented? Are they risk oriented? Are they making a decision to get away from something or to get something? These kind of things all lead into what we call rapport. Are we in synergy with each other? And when I get one of my strategy bases around those questions that I just asked, and I begin to formulate my pitch, my presentation, my conversation with understanding that style. Here's one. How about if I understand whether you buy based on visual, auditory, right? Or kinesthetic? Are you a look here or touch kind of person? And do I build a presentation based around that? That all goes into rapport. So as you look at, all right, now, I'm going, what kind of relationship do I have with this prospect? What I would start doing on a scale of one to 10, where am I on these five pillars? My guess is if you're any good, you're between a nine and a 10 on likability. The rest of these, we usually need more work. All right, fam, till next time.